بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أحبت في الله لا شك no doubt that one of the greatest acts of ibadah that you can do and that is a, a form of ibadah that keeps you engaged with your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so easy it's so easy to remember Allah azza wa jal that making dhikr of your Lord Tabarak wa Ta'ala, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, saying things like SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, Wallahu Akbar, that this helps you to avoid sin. It helps you to avoid sinfulness. How is that the case, Ahabatifillah? Well, the more you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the less opportunity you have for wicked and sinful speech, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates. And bil aqs, the opposite is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves that you make dhikr of Him, you make remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And dhikr, ayu al ahbab, this remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on our tongue is very easy, and it can help limit your sinfulness and keep you cognizant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, the one who doesn't remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very often, but they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes, that means their heart is not as alive as the one who remembers Allah often. Because Iman is life. Your Iman is life for the heart. It gives comfort, raha, to the heart by making dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, the one whose heart is alive, they remember Allah more and they have less opportunity to sin. For example, Sometimes you might recall music that you used to listen to and hopefully don't still listen to. But old songs, they come to your mind and you can remember all of the lyrics. The more you dhikr Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the less likely you're going to have for that. The more you put in good stimulus, which is reading the Quran, which is keeping uh, Allah, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fresh on your tongue, that this keeps your heart alive and it keeps you away from the reminiscing and going deep into things that have no benefit. But again, this takes activity. But it's such an easy activity. It's so simple to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this dhikr ahabba, ayu al ahabba, ul ahbab, this remembrance of Allah azza wa jal, again is easy. But it just takes being more and more conscious of your Lord. That's what the dhikr, that's what the salihin do. That's how they gain their status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they spend their time and their effort and their energy remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, drawing nearer to Allah azza wa jal, refraining from sin, remaining from the negative and sinful speech, but rather being active, having an actively engaged heart. And, and, and establishing that relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what I want you to do now and especially during Ramadan. Especially during the holy month of Ramadan. Use your time to remember your Lord. It's so easy. You can remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
at all times. On the way to school, on the way from school. At school, on the way to, uh, to the masjid, from the masjid, in the masjid, in your home. It, it, it's just, it, it's that easy. When you're hiking, when you're camping, when you're doing whatever activities you love, if you're sewing, when you're sewing, you can remember Allah. Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Wallahu Akbar. And I also encourage you to learn the meanings of the, of the adhkar and the supplications to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Try to sit down and learn and listen and read some of the material out there that refers to the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and gives you the meaning, the meanings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names and attributes, the meanings of that, those adhkar, those different ways of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the meaning of your du'as, your supplications. So that way you can supplicate with a fully engaged heart. Make sure your heart is engaged with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that comes by thinking about and contemplating the ma'ani, the meanings of what you're reciting, the meanings of what you read and those ways of coming close to Allah subhanahu wa Ta'ala. A last thing I wanted, wanted to mention, Habitifillah, <clears throat> is that remember that the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, an, is tawheed. It's actualizing tawheed in that you are remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his divine names and attributes. You're supplicating to him. You are, you know, reciting his, his name and you are praising him, uh, you know, for his attributes. You know, Alhamdulillah, all the praise belongs to Allah. SubhanAllah, glory be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, he's free from all the shirk and all the things they attribute to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, falsely. Uh, Allahu Akbar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all of that, that is ways of keeping your heart alive. You have to keep in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow that dhikr to be a source of food for your soul, a source of food for the qalb, and a source of comfort. So it sustains it, it feeds it, and likewise it brings it the raha, it brings it the comfort. And we know that the Messenger وسلم, said the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is you know one of the greatest acts of ibadah, it's one of the few acts that last in this dunya that are that is, it's the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's one of the greatest things you could do. The greatest forms of ibadah. And dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has many, many ways of accomplishing that dhikr. Uh, of, of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And doing talib al ilm Seeking knowledge to draw near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With that intent, with that maqsad, <clears throat> with that sharia based objective. To learn more about your deen. To practice your deen better. To practice your deen and stay in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of that is a part of the dhikr. Sitting in the majalis of dhikr. That's sitting in the majalis of Ahl al-ilm. Ahl al-ilm sunnah Ahl al-ilm thiq That that reminds you of Allah. So that's why it's so important to have good company. But also, the best of company is to be in a company of ilm. A company of ilm. With the students of knowledge. With the ulama. Especially those who can teach you more about your deen, how to draw nearer to Allah, how to understand the book and the sunnah, how to draw near to your Lord, Tabarakatara. There is nothing as great as that because those are the majalis that have barakah. Those are the sittings that have barakah. They have blessings. And because they remind you of Allah, they remind you to practice, they teach you how to practice, and they bring that comfort to the heart. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us and protects us from kulli suwa makru. And may Allah Azza wa Jal bless us to be the vakirin wa vakirat who Allah mentions throughout the Quran. Those who dhikr Allah kathira, they remember Allah so much, so often. SubhanAllah, that, that brings a protection for you. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be from amongst those who remember Him often. Wa sallallahu wa sallam. 
على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم